I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Terry Edinburgh, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Sacramento County Office of Education. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. Well, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, what was it like to be named a Teacher of the Year? Exciting, surprising. The day that the, uh, my principal, Carmen, and Robin Pearson, Dave Gordon came into my classroom. It was the middle of a school day, so I was in teacher mode. And we're in the middle of lunches, as a matter of fact, and they walk in. And it was funny, too, because I was getting ready to leave the classroom when our secretary, Stephanie, told me, don't go nowhere. <laughs> and I'm going, okay. And so I'm standing there waiting, and then all of a sudden in walks Carmen and Robin with a uh, a uh, bouquet of balloons and Dave Gordon with the plant and they tell me I'm teacher of the year mm. so quite it, exciting it was very exciting even my student it, the really nice part in it was that it happened with my students there and they were smiling I had a couple of them clapping their hands and they may not have known quite what they were celebrating, but they knew they were celebrating something. Well, let's talk about your students. Uh, explain, you know, where you teach and, and, and what you teach, you, the type of students. I'm a special education teacher, and I work with students with severe disabilities. I teach in a special day class at Prairie Elementary School in the Elk Grove School District. And the nice part about having my class housed on the Prairie campus is that we can integrate our students with the regular education students. But my students are kindergarten through fourth grade. They have se uh, severe disabilities, so I deal with autism, Down syndrome, uh, myriad of disabilities, seizure disorders. I have uh, some students who have a lot of medical issues, so we deal with uh, trachs and tube feedings and um, I have a student that we have heart problems so with my population we have a whole gamut of you know different issues that we deal with on a daily basis. So you're also you're dealing with medical issues as well as educational issues. Exactly exactly and not only just medical issues but because my students do have severe disabilities. We're also dealing with uh, orthopedic issues. Uh, so we're dealing with students who don't walk, who we're teaching to sit and stand. So my educational program doesn't look like your typical teacher's program. We do teach the, the curriculum piece. We do work on ABCs, one, two, threes. We teach them to write their name, uh, you know, looking at books, learning letters, learning words, but in addition to that, we're also working on their, what we call activities of daily living skills. So we're teaching them how to feed themselves. We're teaching them how to go to the bathroom. We're teaching them how to groom, how to brush their teeth. We're also teaching them how to sit, how to stand, how to walk, and we're developing those fine motor skills as well. And that's where the eating comes into play and things like that. So it's a combination of educational skills and life skills. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. What kind of special challenges does that bring about in your classroom? It, one of the biggest challenges that we can deal with is the behaviors because a lot of our students are learning how to communicate. And uh, behaviors is all about communication. So one of our biggest challenges is developing the communication piece because once we can develop the communication piece, then we can extinguish a lot of those behaviors. In addition to dealing with communication with our students, it is dealing with the, the physical needs and meeting those needs as well as the, as the medical needs and helping not only the student but the families with those as well. What's it like for you as a special education teacher when you're working with a student and you see that light bulb go on that you they may not be able to communicate to you that they get it but you know they get it exactly and it's exciting it's so exciting it's so rewarding and a lot of our students gains are real minute they're small they attain their goals in small increments and then there are times where they just jump from uh, the baseline to where we want them to be 
But you're right, a lot of times they can't communicate, I got it, but we can see it in their eyes. Mm -hmm. And when they do get it, it's so exciting. And But even more so what's most exciting is when they can transfer that skill to the home and to the community, because then we know they truly got it. It's one thing to be able to do it in the classroom, but if they can't transfer it to the home and to the community, then they really truly haven't gotten it yet. We want them to be able to do it across the board. So when they do transfer it to the home, to the community, um, how does that impact the child's life? Oh, it's great. It, it, it opens up communication. It opens up the ability to sit with the family and watch TV. Um, if I can share a funny story. Please. We were teaching one of my students to sign. We were teaching her to sign, I'm finished, I wanna eat, I wanna drink, and she was getting it. It was, it had been like a year and a half of working with her, and then finally it just clicked for her and she was signing all over the place. Well, I forgot one little small piece, which was to let my parents know what she had accomplished at school. So we get to our IEP a few months later, and we always start out our IEPs asking the parents if they have any questions, if they have any issues, if they have any concerns. So dad says, well, I do have a, he says, it's not a concern, but it's a question. And we said, okay, what was the question? He says, well, lately my daughter's been doing this all the time. <laughs> and he goes, we don't know what it is. <laughs> And so then I realized that I blew it because she was telling dad I'm finished. Yeah. He has said, yeah, she does it after she eats, she does it when she goes to the bathroom, and they're trying to figure out what is she doing. And so I had to apologize to my father and let him know I'm really sorry. That was my fault, but that was her sign for finish. And the smile and the joy on the father's face was priceless mm -hmm. because he looked at us and he went, she's signing? Yes, she is. And so I was able to put together a little book for the family so that they could see all of the signs she, she had learned. But the beauty in it, because it had transferred to home, she can now communicate to her family and they can communicate back to her. So what inspired you to be a teacher, especially uh, in special education? Well, it goes way back to when I was in the sixth grade. And I was one of the top students in my sixth grade class. So we were chosen to become tutors for students who were behind in first and second grade. And where we had the tutoring set up was in this um, uh, small room kind of set off to the side in the main office. And we would go into that uh, room and we would tutor our students. Well, there was one student in there that always came and she had a disability. She sat in a wheelchair, but they never wanted us to work with her. It was almost like just get her out of the classroom, someplace for her to be. And she fascinated me and I would always ask questions. And it really bothered me too because they were all, don't worry about her, she's fine. But I'm like, well, she, lo she looks like she wants us to read to her. She would try to inch her wheelchair to get closer to what we were doing. So that sparked an interest. Um, and I pursued special education as far as getting involved in the Special Olympics, doing things at my school when we had different uh, programs that included kids with disabilities, uh, tutoring students. Even though my desire when I went to college was to become a physical therapist. So, you know, went off to college, did my thing, but I still maintained that connection with special, special education. It wasn't until I left, after finishing college, I got a job at Napa State Hospital. It wasn't until after I left Napa State that I got a job as a para ed in the classroom working with students with severe disabilities. And then the opportunity presented itself where I could start teaching, and I took it, got my credential, and, and been doing it ever since. And now you are a Teacher of the Year. And now I'm a Teacher of the Year. Well, congratulations to you. Thank you. We've been speaking with Terry Edinburgh, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Sacramento County Office of Education. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me.